All right, guys, reporting to you live from Will's basement again for another episode of Will's basement. We're going to get back onto the hot rod, rat rod project thing. I think I'm going to call it a woods rod or woods rat or, oh, so it's not even, it's not even June, but I just like her. Uh, woods rat. I think well, that's what we're going with. So on today's episode, we are dealing with a slight problem I'm having with this factory lower control arm rear mount. I don't know if it's this particular frame uh, or this mount, but the lower control arm that I have for the suspension won't fit in this uh, in here so what I'm gonna do is cut this one off and move it back uh, it only needs to be moved back like half an inch so I'm just gonna move that back and build a whole new one of these um, it'll be stronger anyway so once that's done then we can put the control arm on and then move up to getting the upper control arm tacked in test everything and then we can start working on mounting the coilovers so I'm gonna get to it, start slicing and dicing here. All right, so what I'm gonna do first is I'm just gonna slice this down the middle, cut along this weld here, and peel this backside off. Then I'm gonna put the control arm in without the bushings and line it up with this one, and then make a new piece that fits on the backside of that perfectly. Then I'll do the same thing with this one, and then I'll box in the top. So here's what we got going on. Uh, I cut off the factory side, I mean the front side of this bracket. I'm leaving the back side on just so I can get this hole aligned in the uh, control arm sitting in the right spot. So I have both of the bushings installed on the front side. On the back side, what I'm gonna do is do this bushing here with the sleeve in it and kind of have it sit there um, because if it sticks out on this side at all it won't fit in there um, with the bracket so I'm just gonna kind of use that um, to make a template here um, to be able to bolt that in so I'm gonna get this up in place okay holy crap I had to do that off camera because I was struggling I almost knocked the camera over it's a real tight fit, as you can see, even with no bushing in here, it's hitting this, and that's why I need to move it back. I mean, the arm barely wants to move. It's so tight. So, what I'm going to do now is make a template to go here uh, out of cardboard, and then cut it out of steel, tack it in, and then I'll use the bolt going this way, take this one off, and reverse the process. So, yeah. Bear with me here. All right, boys. This is the uh, the cardboard template I've made here. So it fits pretty good. Um, as you can see, there's still a gap. But what I'm going to do is cut this out of steel, tack this in place, and basically just use it as a placeholder for the arm so I know that it's not shifting forward to back or side to side. It'll, that way it'll keep perfect alignment. And then I'll cut this one off, do the same for the other side, put that up there. Weld that on, cut this one back off, get it all aligned nice and tight, and then fully weld it, and uh, obviously make a top plate or whatever. All right guys, I got my shape cut out here. I'm gonna drill the hole first, just cause it'll help kind of hold this this big piece. Uh, pro tip, you guys need drill bits. These Matco drill bits, they're called the Hyper Step. They have kind of a built-in step bit at the end and these things smoke through metal and they're also warranted for life so if they stop working get dull anything like that break they replace them for free so a little on the pricey side but it's worth every penny let me tell you all right here she is 
That's the forward one. And fits in there real nice. I'm just gonna match this angle, get it tight to the frame, tack it, and then we can remove this one. Flow in the breeze with me for life, my darling. We can take it too far, keep it close. To me and you, let's make a toast and swing through the trees. Swing through the trees with me tonight, my darling. Flow in the breeze, flow in the breeze with me for life, my darling. We can take it too far, keep it close. To me and you, let's make a toast and get a little bit of this jungle fever. Get a little bit of this jungle fever. Okay, so getting ready to mount the second one back here, and then I'm going to cut this one off and move it back once this is made up. But um, quick tip, when you're doing stuff like this, where you have to have something that slides in and out, um, make a little spacer out of like a really thin piece of cardboard. This is off like a light bulb box. Um, and then drill a hole in it and use it as a spacer. So when you tack everything up and use that, it'll give you just enough clearance to get this in and out um, whenever you need to take it out. So I'm gonna get this on there and get it tacked up. Jane, swing with Tarzan, baby. Just let go. This is our land, baby. We should be up on our stand, baby. Just different shades of a dark tan, baby. And ain't it flawless? History, we are part of the progress. Even though we get looks like you're passing a car wreck, a yak on a prom dress. Wait. Oh, you're still my bomb threat. You blow my mind, baby, with no contact. Baby. Okay, so I got this one cut off. So now. I'm just gonna kind of reverse the process. Have the bolt come through this way, and then add my spacer. And then take the piece that I cut off, and put it on there, and just get it lined up with this one. And the reason I did all this is so that this arm is in the factory position and stayed where it should be. So now I'll just make it tight, clean, and uh, get this tacked on and then I'll make a top piece for it. So I did a little CAD work here. Cardboard aided design. And basically I'm just gonna run this piece up to the top of the frame here and then I made a little bend where I need my 90 to be or not 90 but this angle here and as you can see I did it in a way so it just barely sits on this lip that way I can weld all through here and then later be able to blend this same with this side so you don't want to just have it overlap completely because you're not going to be able to really get much weld in there. This way, if you have it sitting on this lip, like so, you can get a lot more weld in there. Which will make it a lot stronger. So I'm going to cut this out and get it tacked in. Okay, boys. I got the plate all cut out. Um, I made this bend by basically just scoring it with the cutoff wheel. And then put it in the vise, heating it up, and then just uh, hitting it with a hammer until I got it to where I like it. So... That's going to go on there like that, and uh, I'm going to start tacking. Sweet. All tacked in. I also rounded this lower corner just to make it look a little bit cleaner. Uh, and with the process of movie magic, I did the other side as well. So now I'm just going to leave it tacked for now and uh, start working on the upper control arm. Getting that in place. What you say? Damn, you still my bomb threat. You blow my mind, baby, without no context. Escape from the nonsense to live in my conscience and get a little bit of this jungle fever. Get a little bit of this jungle fever. Way too high to you know I need you. To get a little bit of this jungle fever. Swing through the trees. 
swing through the trees with me tonight, my darling. Flow in the breeze, flow in the breeze with me for life, my darling. We can take it too far, keep it close. To me and you, let's make a toast and swing through the trees. Swing through the trees with me tonight, my darling. Flow. All right. So this next part, we need the misalignment spacers for the heim joints. You just click in like this. Go stick your tongue out to get them in there. Pro tip. Okay. Then what I have is a threaded rod that fits in these perfectly, um, and then a bunch of nuts and washers. So what you want to do is take your tabs that are going on the frame and there's a, um, a taller one and a shorter one. Shorter ones go up front. So we're gonna slip that on here like so. This in here, I'm gonna drop everything. Okay. And then we take the other tab and basically sandwich that together. Another washer. And this is the annoying part, it's working this nut all the way down. But I did spray some uh, oil on this rod, so hopefully that'll help a little bit. Okay, before you get too close to the end, I actually stopped it perfectly. We need to get this other side going. So, uh, nut. Tab, okay, and then slide that through, and then just keep working this one down so that it sandwiches up tight on here. way with the other one. Make sure your hinds are just right where you want them. Alright, so then just flip this over. All these tabs going the right way. Okay. So you can see this back one is almost perfect. I'm not touching up here, so I just gotta adjust that down. Okay. So what this threaded rod does is just kind of hold everything in place. And you want it tight, but just hand tight. You don't need to tighten it down, tighten it down with a wrench or anything like that. So what I'll do now is I'm just gonna check these clearances. You can see some of these aren't exactly perfect, if I get that to focus. So I'll just grind those to fit. See, this one's way off. It's because this one's touching up here. So I'll take a little bit of this, a little bit of the frame, and then I'll get that perfectly on there and then tack them in place. So that's pretty much full bump right there because we're hitting the factory uh, cross member. So yeah. Everything looks good. Seems to move pretty well. All right, guys, so the next thing we're gonna do is figure out this frame. I wanna cut this back. Um, I'm thinking about here, but maybe a little bit far forward. I gotta think about this, um, the steering box. So maybe somewhere along here. So that's the next thing we're gonna do is cut that back. 